Soon you're going to see a new car that's more than just a new car. Introducing the Ford Granada. Ford Granada. Ford Granada. This is the history of the Ford Granada. The Granada would appear for the 1975 model year and would continue the evolution the Ford Maverick had started. The story was of luxury and a greatly reduced footprint that would rival the best offerings from the U.S. and Europe. Ford's main concern was convincing the American public that a smaller car could be just as luxurious as the traditional American barges of the past. Granada would have to appear different, regardless of the bones on which it was based. Despite significant energy and economic uncertainties, the American people were reluctant to let go of their land yacht. So, comparisons to the best of the best were made right from the start. Granada was presented as an elegantly downsized solution to America's transportation needs. Many aspects of Granada were covered in great detail in Ford's brochures. A great deal of effort was also invested into convincing prospective buyers that Granada was precision-sized, not downsized. The standard 200 cubic inch 6 didn't exactly advance Granada's luxury reputation. However, the available 250 cubic inch 6 as well as a 302 and 351 V8 offerings did offer a bit more power and prestige. But this is, of course, all in the context of this most malaise of times. The vast range of luxury and appearance features made the Granada a hit. And as before, there was a driving force behind this remarkable automotive success story. Years before Lee Iacocca was saving Chrysler, he was saving Ford. Again, Iacocca and his team saw the future was not bright for traditional full-size American luxury. So, he insisted that Granada would feature styling and content that went far beyond anything previously offered in a mainstream downsized American car. And he didn't stop with the Ford brand. Mercury would offer an even more luxurious variant. Introducing the new precision-sized Mercury Monarch. Instead of crowding people into a small car, we build a car around people. Monarch did offer a compelling product for the traditional Lincoln buyer. Exteriors featured even more right work and enhanced detailing. The grille and turn signals were distinct, and the hood ornament was probably the largest ever offered on a car of this size. It was for this reason that Monarch and Granada were designed from the start to offer unusual amounts of luxury and sophistication. Even though Ford succeeded in some ways, there is no denying that the Lincolns of this time period were truly something else, a kind that has not been seen since they left. Granada would prove from the start to be one of those worthwhile efforts. The combination of formal, upright styling and vast range of comfort and convenience features made it a major sales success. The Ghia trim level in particular personified the spirit of Granada. Even more luxurious was the Ghia trim level. Like door cards featured Rolls-Royce-esque upper faux wood trim that was surprisingly convincing. Floating pillow-style seating surfaces and a digital clock combined with available ultra-soft leather to outclass most rivals in Granada's price range, foreign or domestic. Once again, there was cause for celebration. Ford had the right car at the right time. In addition to the generous array of standard features, what set Granada apart was the available options. Higher trim levels, offered over 100 pounds of sound insulation, and remote control rear view mirrors. At the sign of the cat, you'll find Lincoln Mercury's hottest selling new entry in 14 years, Mercury Monarch. We think it's the greatest. I didn't know that. Introduced alongside Granada, Monarch offered a higher level of standard features and detailing. That's something to think about. Granada and Monarch did arrive at a time when advertisers were rapidly moving away from the concept of more inches sell more cars. It was clearly by its second model year that Granada was a sales success. To avoid future in future cases of mistaken identity, Ford reminds the police officers of America there is a car that looks somewhat like a Cadillac Seville but is priced closer to a Volkswagen Rabbit, the Ford Granada. The effort to distill large car handling and comfort into a smaller package proved popular among younger buyers in particular. 
Ghia continued for 1976 with even more luxury detailing inside and out. The two-door was labeled a sedan, which is probably a more accurate description than coupe, as the two- and four-door models actually shared identical wheelbase and overall length. The luxury decor option featured bucket seats and a sporty console with storage and an armrest. The sporty sedan model toned down the wood grain accents for the interior and added heavy-duty suspension components. Available power ranged from the standard 200 cubic inch 6 to the 351 V8. Introducing the 1977 Ford Granada. I'm back, sweetheart. <laughs> no! oh, 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 sorry, I thought this was my Cadillac. Well, it's my Mercedes, you... Animal. Granada saw few changes for 1977, primarily because sales remained very strong. In only a few short years, Ford had proven that it was possible to successfully downsize from the massive land yachts of the past. The Granada represented a new generation of cars for a new generation of buyers. Introducing a new 1978 Ford Granada, the ESS. Can you tell it from this impressive $20,000 Mercedes 280SE? Granada. Mercedes. The big news for 1978 was a restyled front end featuring the latest craze, rectangular headlights. An ESS model attempted to further push the point that Granada was just like Mercedes, only cheaper. The Ghia models continued into 1978, as did the two- and four-door sedan body styles. New two-tone paint and wheel trim options were the only other major exterior changes. Fabrics and sewing patterns were also revised and and in some ways seemed to be cost reduced. There was no reduction in profit generating comfort and convenience features, however. The highlight of which was the new quadrasonic A-Track radio developed by Ford Aerospace. The optional 5-liter V8 was still available as were heavy-duty groups of electrical and suspension components. Inspector, I have the clues. You have the clues? Meet me in a silver Mercedes outside. Mercedes! Now, in its fifth model year, the first generation Granada was still packing a significant blow to the competition. But it was clear change was on the horizon. Glitzy marketing and dubious comparisons to Mercedes can only distract for so long from the ever-increasing concerns caused by the economic factors as well as the emergence of serious foreign rivals. Not to mention the fact Granada was based on the now truly ancient bones of the early 60s era Falcon. Monarch would soldier on as the odd one out. It's another example of a haphazard badge. Granada was severely inadequate. It had been heavily altered over the years to meet ever-increasing safety requirements. The continuous addition of structural reinforcements was inefficient compared to the clean sheet design of offerings such as Ford's own Fox body. And of course, by now, it was clear no one was mistaking a Granada for a Mercedes. No matter how much black paint was smeared on the window sills. One must not forget, however, the significant role Granada played in the success of the Ford Motor Company of the 1970s. It was a better idea at just the right time. Well, there you have it, the history of the Ford Granada. What was your favorite year? Let us know. Leave a comment below. If you liked this video, leave us a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that bell for future video notifications. Again, thanks for watching the Boca Brothers Car Reviews.